These are four lithium ion phosphate batteries, model number 32700, with a capacity of 6,000 milliamp hours, connected with a 32A protection board, support frame, and insulated paper. With these components, you can assemble a 12V battery pack. First, place a layer of Lightcraft paper on the positive terminal of each battery for additional insulation. Though the positive terminal already has insulation, it's still not quite enough. After securing the insulation, we will use the dedicated 32650 support frame to fix the batteries. The 32650 and 32700 frames are interchangeable. The benefit of using a frame is convenient assembly, better insulation, impact resistance and heat dissipation. Place them in a 4 series arrangement. Lithium ion phosphate batteries have a nominal voltage of 3.2 volts, so a 12 volt battery pack requires 4 in series. If using ternary lithium batteries, only 3 are needed. Next we have an essential tool for welding, the spot welder. This machine is modified from a microwave oven transformer. Get a short chain to connect the battery cells. Cut the chain according to the distance between the two electrodes. To connect four batteries in series, first cut three segments of the chain. Use these segments to connect the positive and negative terminals of the four batteries in series. The welding points need to be firm to avoid false connections. After connecting in series, measure the voltage of the battery pack with a BW4 meter to see if it's around 12 volts. If the measurement is correct, proceed to install the protection board. Use high temperature resistant double sided tape to fix the protection board onto the battery pack. The position of the protection board also matters. Try to place it where the wires are short and easy to connect. Next, the welding process connects each battery cell to the bus bar and protective board. This allows the protective board to monitor the voltage of each battery cell. If there's any abnormality in the voltage of a cell, it may cause the protective board to fail. While using the battery pack, issues like incomplete charging or early completion of charging with no output are usually because of a problem with a single cell, leading to protective board failures. Therefore, before assembling your battery, make sure to match the cells properly. Ensure the cells have very high consistency and capacity, internal composition, and discharge curve. This will significantly improve the overall performance and lifespan of the battery pack. When welding, any strip that needs to cross must be insulated with either high temperature tape or mica paper for insulation. These materials share two common features, high temperature resistance and flame retardancy. This can prevent insulation damage due to heat, which might lead to short circuits and fires. Once the connections are in place, we'll wrap the entire battery pack's electrodes with insulating material to avoid short circuits during use. At this point, the battery pack is basically ready. The last step is to use the heat shrink wrap. Before that, we can test and check if the protection board has output. If it does, we need to charge and activate the protection board before use. If the protection board measures an output, it means the protection board is functioning correctly. Finally, we will perform charge-discharge tests on the battery pack. If the test goes smoothly, the battery pack is complete. Isn't it surprisingly simple to make it?